All right. So good afternoon, everyone. This is the second session for research methodology uh, paper. And in I hope that my <laughs> Uh, Miss Pranali Kelaskar, uh, uh, do you are you having any problem uh, or can you mute yourself? All right, so I'm starting with the slides. I hope uh, the screen is visible to everyone. Can anyone please send a message or something if you know this person? Uh, if, uh, she can mute herself. I have tried to send a message also. Okay. So in the previous session, we have discussed about nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio scales. It's very disturbing, actually. I have asked her again. Ma'am, admin can mute everyone. Um, but admin is also not listening right now. Ma'am, you are admin, you can mute your setting. I tried. Can you please tell me from where I can do that? <laughs> मैम ऑन स्ट्रीम का आप देख सकते हैं उसमें आपको रिकॉर्डिंग का या फिर एक ऑप्शन आ रहा होगा ऊपर माइक का उस पे क्लिक करके आप म्यूट कर सकते हैं यस मैम हो गया थैंक यू वेरी मच अंकुर so let's start. In the previous session, I have discussed about nominal, ordinal, interval, and uh, uh, ratio techniques. Uh, sorry, ratio is scales, the variables which we define in our research. So when just a uh, look on this, nominal is basically simple classifications like male or female. You are giving one number to male or the number to female. And the central tendency which you can use in nominal scale is mode. Then ordinal variables are those which are in which you can relatively ranks, but should remember that numbers are not equidistant. Okay, you can calculate mode and median. Now in interval, you can rank, and also there are approximately equal intervals in between the ranks. So then you can uh, go with mean, median, and mode. And the last one is ratio is scale, which is of highest measurement. And here there is absolute zero, and zero means nothing in this, like length and weight. And yes, you can use mode, median, and mean. With these, you can also multiply and divide. These operations you can do on this. So this is all about research and how the research is done and framed, which we discussed in the previous session. Now, just moving to the next topic of research methodology, which is the process of research. It is a seven step process and have to be done in this proper format only. The step one is you have to define a research problem. Step two, review of literature, then formulation of hypothesis, then preparing the research design, 
data collection, data analysis, interpretation, and report writing. In any research, you have to go through this all seven uh, processes of research. Let's take them one by one. You can also write it in this form in your examination because it is more helpful. Uh, so we have you have designed the research problem, review of literature, formulation of hypothesis, and uh, research design collection. And just remember, uh, feedback uh, and feed forward are the two terms used here. So from collection of data to analysis and analysis to collection of data, we have feedback. And feed forward is from when you analyze the data, then again, you do designing of research that will be feed forward. So these are the two things which are incorporated newly in this process. If you write these, you will get good marks, feed forward and feedback. So the very first thing which you have to, this question basically comes in all paper of research methodology that you have to write the research process in detail. So the step one is define the problem. It uh, basically research process begins at this step when you recognize a problem or opportunity which you feel that in this field or in this particular uh, area, I should do my research, right? So at the very outset, the researcher must single out the problem he wants to study, that is decide area of interest. Here, it does not mean that you have to be very specific in defining your problem, but you should understand or you should uh, you know, able to allocate your area of interest in which you are going to do your research. So there are two steps involved in this, understanding the problem thoroughly, and rephrasing the same into meaningful terms for from an analytical point of view. Suppose you want that I will study customer satisfaction. So you know the area that now you are going to perform a research in customer satisfaction field. But what you have to do, you have to frame or rephrase your this term customer satisfaction or the research problem into a meaningful term from an analytical point of view, as in like you an analysis on customer satisfaction of suppose Antorque sports model. Yeah, customers using Antorc sports model. So that will be very specific and it will have analytical point of view also. And all the terms are very much clear, like customer satisfaction of customer will be of and who purchased Antorc sports model, right? So this is how you have to rephrase your problem again and again till you reach towards an towards a specific problem which you want to study or analyze in your research. Now, the best way to understand this uh, is to discuss it with your uh, colleagues or people you think are have expertise in the area of research. This you should be doing while uh, developing a research problem. Now, extensive literature review, which is a step second. You have to read a lot of literature and find out that and just understand this, that literature must be related to your problem, which you have identified. Suppose you have identified uh, the same problem, customer satisfaction of and dark sports model user. Then what you will do, you will read all the literature, extensive literature available uh, on customer satisfaction and talk, uh, you know, the, the uh, manufacturing or the details of and talk, what are the features of and talk. So you have to go through with the, the uh, studies which have done research on customer satisfaction. What are the various ways of measuring customer satisfaction? You have to identify what research have already been done. So this is the part where uh, you might feel that I am doing nothing related to research, but actually you are preparing a very good foundation to your research topic. That is why you have to perform extensive literature survey. Uh, I think in your projects, whatever the projects you are taking, at least you should analyze 50 to 
hundred research papers or research topics related to your topic which you are going to take in your research then only that will be extensive otherwise it will be only literature survey and it might be possible that some person has already done a research on customer satisfaction of an antarctic sports model then there will be your research will be of no use right so that is why you have to at least analyze 50 to 100 related research topics and then come towards your problem for this purpose you have manuals company records journals and published data can be used now the next is literature review is an integral part of entire research process and makes it valuable it contributes to every operational step though it is yes of course it is time consuming and yes it is frustrating because you are only reading and reading and reading and trying to find out some gap in the research which has been already done or the problem which you are going to take in your research it can be frustrating but it, it is also rewarding because it clarifies and gives you focus to perform your research it improves your methodology it broaden your knowledge base and is contextualize your findings right you can properly frame your findings once you have extensive literature review the next and the very important aspect of your research will be formulation of hypothesis hypothesis is a is actually a tentative assumption this assumption is of researcher suppose let's take the same example an analysis on customer satisfaction of antorch users in lucknow suppose we are taking like that so your assumption should be that uh, your hypothesis should be that customers are satisfied with the specifications and the quality of antorch right so this will be your tentative assumption so you have to formulate your hypothesis very empirically and very logically so that your research can be done and it can be preceded with full statistics analysis okay so the role of hypothesis is to guide the researcher by delimiting the area of research aapko ek particular area of research pe highlight mil jata hai and to keep him on the right track aap idhar udhar na bhatko for that purpose also you need to formulate an hypothesis next is preparing the research design yes as i have told you your research can be basically explorative descriptive diagnostic or diagnosis and experimentation right this can be the purpose of your research to so as per the purpose of your research you have to form a research design in which you, how you are going to research design is basically what will be your sample how you are going to study your variables the complete methodological design which you are going to uh, uh, you know apply in your research is basically research design these four approaches i cleared in the previous session also if you are exploring or describing or you are doing any cause and effect analysis or any experimentation so this is what research design is we will discuss the different types of research design in the coming slides the step fifth is data collection once you have uh, you know uh, made a particular research design yes that i am i am going to experiment yeah or i am going to diagnose the relationship between customer satisfaction and usage of enter so this will be your uh, the criteria now what you have to do you have to collect data for analyzing your research and that data can be collected by observation through personal interview through telephonic interviews by mailing of questionnaires and through schedules right so in, i think that in the case which we are taking analyzing customer satisfaction then uh, uh, by mailing of questionnaires or through personal interviews on the antorg dealers right uh, where you will be where you will be finding or you can say i think not the dealers but the service centers of tvs will be more uh, beneficial approach for personal interview if you want there to identify their the customer satisfaction of antorch users 
So uh, through personal interview or by mailing of questionnaires, by taking data from the service centers or the, you can say, dealers to which they have sold that and talk and mail the questionnaires to them and request them to fill your questionnaire, you can collect data related to your studies. Uh, you all know what is observation just by observing when you are analyzing the data. And interview is basically personal interview when you are uh, doing face-to-face uh, -face personal interaction and telephone. We all know what is telephonic interviews. There is There are two terms, questionnaires and schedules. They both have questions. They are survey method. The difference between questionnaires and schedules is basically questionnaires are to be filled by respondents. Right? You just mail them and they fill it. And schedules are to be filled by researcher herself or himself. Right? You just make the questions and ask those questions to the respondents and you have to fill that schedule that then it becomes a schedule. Okay? So they both have questions. Questions can be close-ended and open-ended. Close-ended questions are those questions in which there are only options are given to you and you have to mark your solution from those options and open-ended where you can describe your opinion. So these are the different methods. Then after collecting data, you have to analyze data, right? You have to code, you have to edit and you have to tabulate the data. Uh, see, uh, whatever software available for analyzing data like Excel is there, SPSS is there, R programming is there and many more others, all use analysis, uh, means all these uh, systems basically analyze your data in the form of numbers only. So what you have to do, you have to first code your data into numbers. Suppose you have taken a question, how satisfied are you? Uh, from and of mileage and you have written in options like highly satisfied just a second highly satisfied satisfied neutral dissatisfied and highly dissatisfied then what do you do you just give them codes like one is for highly satisfied two is for satisfied three is for neutral and four is for dissatisfied and five is for highly dissatisfied. Now, what you have to do, you have to code each and every answer of each and every individual as per this scale. Okay. And this will be ordinal scale, right? Why? Because you can put it in a rank, but you don't know that the difference between highly satisfied and satisfied is equal to satisfied and non-satisfied, okay? Neutral. So this is how you identify what scale is this, and this is how you basically code each and every data. You have to edit your data also as per the requirement, and then you tabulate, right? You put it in the form of tables, graphs, pie charts, and even higher statistics you can apply for analyzing the data like t-test, f-test, chi-square test, parametric and non-parametric test, correlation, regression to prove your hypothesis to be true or false, whatever the result can be. Next, the last step for this research process is interpretation and report writing. So the very first thing you do is interpret your findings. Uh, you find the inference, you generalize those inferences and reach towards a conclusion. And after that, you have to start your report writing. The report basically uh, includes three preliminary pages, the prelim preliminary pages, main text and the end matter. The project which you will be going to make will require everything like this in this manner. The very first chapter will be introduction to your topic, right? Second chapter will be of literature review in which you have to uh, give all the reviews about the literature you have read. Then the third chapter will be of research methodology in which you will explain what uh, 
type of research design, what type of sample, what are different variables used in your study, and how, what test are you going to apply, how the sample is created, how the questionnaire is created, everything in this chapter. Then comes the chapter of data analysis. After uh, this research methodology, there will be data collection and analysis you can write that will become. And after this, there will be findings of your analyzed data. The next will be recommendations or inferences. And the last chapter will be conclusion. Uh, it's not mandatory that it should be in this form only, but these are the basic requirements for writing any report of research that you should, your report should contain all these chapters, okay? And uh, before this report writing uh, or starting a research, there is one more thing which you actually develop and that is synopsis. Synopsis is basically an insight to your research, how you are going to do your research and what are the benefits means, uh, what topic you are going to take, everything you have to write in synopsis. In synopsis also, you have to give introduction, review of literature, not 50 to 100 reviews, only 10 to 20 reviews will be sufficient for literature review and research methodology. These three things are to be incorporated in your synopsis. And the most important thing in research methodology should be the method of the research. Yes, it is required. But with that, you need objectives of the research and hypothesis of the research. This should be there, not this part will not be included in your uh, synopsis, but introduction, literature review, RM and RM, you have to write the RM first, then objectives and hypothesis also. And how do you think that your research is going to contribute to the society or to the companies or to the businesses or to the individuals? You have to write that. And in the end, you have to write a time frame. Right in what time you are going to complete your research. Okay, so this will be in your synopsis. If you include all these things in synopsis and your synopsis is 100% genuine, then it will be accepted by the university. And after acceptance of synopsis only, you can go through your research project or perform your research. So this was the research uh, process. Now let's quickly move on to research design. What is basically research design? Research design is a framework of methods and techniques chosen by researcher to combine various components, right? You have to combine various components, like in the example which we are taking, you have to combine customer satisfaction with the NTORC usage, customer satisfaction with NTORC mileage, and many other things. So how you are going to combine various components of research in a logical manner will be your research design. So it basically gives you the answer of how, how you are going to conduct your research using a particular research methodology is research design. So these are some, uh, this is definition given by C.R. Gothari that research methodology is method to analytically explain the research problem. And it may be described as a science of analysis, how research is done systematically. Additionally, research methods are the tools and techniques for doing research. It is basically, as you can say, it is a strategy, a plan, a procedure or a structure to find solution towards your research problem. So there are three main sections of research design, data collection, measurement, and analysis, right? In data collection, how you are going to collect your data through questionnaires, personal interview, or if it is secondary data from the, what will be the sources of gathering those secondary data in data collection, then measurement, the collected data must have variables and variables must be identified as nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio so that you can perform particular statistics as and when required on that. And the last one, how you are going to analyze your data. 
Yes, graphs and pie charts are good visuals to analyze, but to prove the worth of your research or to prove the statistics of your research, you need to go towards higher statistics uh, like the parametric and non-parametric test, which uh, will be discussed in later slides. Then the type of research problem will determine the research design, okay? Your research design is not going to define your problem, but your problem is going to define the design which you are going to take. Variables, designated tools to gather information. When variables ki information up kaha se gather karenge, you have to write that also. So the essential elements of research design are uh, accurate purpose. Your purpose should be accurate and apt. Techniques which you are using to do your research, to collect data in your research. Then methods for analyzing that collective data, type of research methodology, whether it is explorative, descriptive, or your causal, right? Diagnosis, etc. Then probable objections for the research. You have to identify the probable objections also for research settings for research study and the timeline this is the most important thing in how much time you are going to fulfill your research in your synopsis you should write like like this that literature review and suppose it will take two months right and then data collection suppose it will take one month then data analysis one month and then report writing will take around one month. So two, three, four, and five. In five months, your project will be ready. So this is the timeline which you have, you must show in your synopsis, which is the pre-approval for your research project. Then uh, reliability and validity are the two aspects which you have to check in your research design. And the last one is generalization. The outcome of research design should be applicable to population, not just restricted sample. So if the sample you have studied, the outcome generalize karke population ke outcome aapko dikhana padega in your research. You have to do that. It should not be only sample analysis. So this is what research design is all about. Now, uh, reliability and validity are two things which you should understand very well. Uh, very well. Reliability implies consistency. How consistent is your test scores? Okay, means if that experiment is being repeated again and again and again, then the scores must be same or similar at least, right? Then only your uh, research will be called reliable. Okay. Uh, in uh, our ninth, tenth, or eighth class, when we do oscillation experiments in physics or something, then we repeat the experiments three to four times and note the results and take the average. This is what we are actually uh, making our tests more reliable. Okay. So, this is the reliability, which is consistency of the outcomes. There are two tests to measure the reliability of your research. The one is Cuda Richardson 20 test and the other one is Cronbach Alpha test, right? These you can do these two tests very easily in your SPSS. And this Cuda Richardson tells you about the internal reliability, right? The questions which you are using in your questionnaire are internally reliable or not and external reliability whether that questionnaire you are testing is proving reliable for external environment or not so these are the two tests which can be performed mm. let's i'm just skipping all these because it is the same about reliability and validity now uh, let's move on to different types of research design we have exploratory research design in which you are exploring something, you are trying to find out something new. Then descriptive research design in which we have historical research design, survey, case study and development research design. And in experimental, we have true experimental or quasi-experimental, which is not 100% experimental, but somehow experimental or implied experimental, you must say. 
Then comparative research design, in which correlation research design, where you analyze the relationship, correlation between two variables, whether those variables are related or not. If related, what is the direction of their relation? Means positively related or negatively correlated. And other comparative research design is causal comparative research design, where you analyze cause and effect relationship. What is the, if there are two variables, who is the cause and who is the effect? Okay. Then action research design. So let's take what is exploratory research design. It is for entirely new subject or new event or new phenomena. No earlier studies or knowledge are available for this. It's just you are exploring something very new, which is actually in preliminary stages. Okay. So this is what exploratory design is focused on fact finding rather than describing the phenomena. And it is also known as formulative research design. What are the different uses? To be familiar with basic detail setting and concerns, new ideas and assumptions ko explore karne ke liye. To be familiar with well-grounded picture of situation being developed. To study, uh, the study which you are going to identify is feasible in future or not and to lay direction for future research and techniques right so these are some ways in which exploratory research can be used what are the different limitations for exploratory research design the very first limitation is a small sample size uh, while you are doing exploratory research you can't study on large sizes then uh, it, though it is flexible, but it is unstructured because nothing is done previously. You don't know from where to start, how to gather crucial results, how to interpret the, those results. And it lacks rigorous standards of data collection and analysis because you are developing something new and something new can't be developed on old methods. Okay, So these were the basic limitations. Now. Types of exploratory research design. The very first is your literature search. <laughs> so it is one of the fastest and least expensive means to discover any hypothesis. Uh, there is enormous quantity of information available on internet in books and so many uh, commercial databases are there or public databases are there. So from there you can collect that data and explore it right in exploring basically you are identifying the new things or researching the already established thing second is depth interview which can be used you can personally take interviews of the respondents uh, whatever you uh, want to investigate or identify from those and uh, in this depth interviews researcher don't need any questionnaire the approach is highly unstructured, means people give an answer and you can frame questions from those answers and it keeps on going, right? So there is no structured way of doing uh, this, but unstructured way or divergent views are collected in in-depth interviews. Next is focus group. In a focus group, only a few, few people are brought together to study and talk over some theme of interest, right? Eight to 12 persons in a group, they form a group and they talk with each other about the concert problem. And there is a moderator who sits with them and uh, they their experiences and whatever they are discussing is noted by the moderator. And then the uh, final exploring thing is done. The next design is uh, descriptive research design. So in this, you are describing uh, your surroundings or any phenomena in this study. So uh, you have to obtain information about the current uh, status or the current condition of the phenomena, which is already there or which has been there okay so what you are doing you are taking an old thing and you are analyzing it with respect to new environment for example in the example which we are taking 
for customer satisfaction you are taking customer satisfaction but it has been already established what is customer satisfaction and how are you going to measure but now what you are going to do you are going to analyze that customer satisfaction for and or users in lucknow in a particular year also if we take okay so this is what old phenomena selected phenomena but its current status is described so various types of descriptive research research design we have historical research design the major essence of historical research is to justify the relevancy of the past event in the present right in present you have to justify uh the past uh, events right those uh, there are many researches going on even you can see nowadays the syllabus of the uh, school history history which we re which we read in our classes is now different and so many things are changed and how are these changed by historical uh, research design by doing a historical research okay so some past events were not correct and uh, so they, those were again analyzed and presented accordingly next is survey research design in scientific research the survey is a technique of investigation by direct observation of phenomena or collection of information through interview i have many times told you what is survey what are questionnaires so i am not going to tell you again what is a survey let's move on to just taking this the first one types of surveys basically general and specific when you find out uh, when you try to find out solution to a particular problem or a specific problem then that is a specific survey and when you are generally conducting for any general information you are collecting data then that becomes general survey then we have regular and ad hoc survey ad hoc is for a particular time right it is not repeat for repeated issues okay and if you are doing some survey kind of thing repeatedly then it becomes regular survey then we have census and sample if you are analyzing the whole population then that is census and sample when you are taking a part of that po population and analyzing on that then it becomes sample survey now the next is case study research design the word case study implies that a study of single unit deeply and thoroughly you just take a single unit single unit can be an individual or a group of event or a phenomena or a business item entity but it should be a single unit okay you analyze that single unit you observe that single unit you answer how why and what ways the activities and practices are being conducted then that is your case study research design you can perform case study research design also related to companies stock and etc in your projects if you want to take that you can go with this also <clears throat> what are the steps of case research design your objectives must be clearly stated your units must be which you want to study must be identified their characteristics the process of identifying or doing the investigation how you are going to investigate the approach of data collection right you have to <coughs> analyze the data and prepare the report on the basis of result so these are the basic requirements or some steps of doing case study research next is developmental research design or development research design uh, this design basically is a study of change right change and uh, change with respect to time time being the event and you have to analyzing the change with respect to time and in what you are analyzing the change in any social economical cultural or any type of aspect of life and community then that will be uh, you can classify your research in the category of development design when one factor of your research design is time right then 100% it is development research design so it identifies the rate and direction of change 
how the change is being occurred, what is the direction of change, whether positive or negative, whether developmental or it's going in scar, or it is how, what is the rate of that change, how frequently the changes are being take place. So it helps to predict the future trends of the community development. And it is predictive research based on present facts. You are likely to forecast what is going to happen in the upcoming days. So generally, this type of research is your uh, forecasting research. Okay. So in forecasting techniques, the best technique is trend analysis and regression analysis. So we use trend analysis and regression analysis in this type of research, which is of development nature. Now, uh, there are many ways of performing developmental research. The very first is longitudinal study, which is over a period of time. Uh, like uh, you are analyzing, suppose, sales over a period of five years or profits over a period of five years, then that will be your longitudinal research. Then we have panel study. Panel is the group or set of people, set of people who agree to provide information to a research over a time period. So you just select a panel and then analyze, uh, take information from those. They will tell you what has happened there, what after that and after that. And then you do your research and analyze. Then that is known as panel study. Then we have trend studies. Trend study is the research of any phenomena or behavior of people with data collected at intervals spread over a time. Suppose you are analyzing the sales, then that over the period of time, like monthly sales or yearly sales or quarterly sales, then that will be your trend study. The next is cohort study. Cohort your cohort is a group of people with common characteristics. They have common characteristics, values and experience um, through a period of time, uh, like uh, the um, you know uh, development of youth okay so what you have you are doing basically you are uh, targeting on the common characteristic that is the age group which is youth okay so this is how uh, if this type of a study is the name for this uh, type of method will be cohort study generally qualitative framework are used in this kind of uh, research Next is cross-sectional research. The cross-sectional study is the study of different groups or subgroups from a broad study area at a time. You just take a single period of time and you analyze between different groups or different subgroups, then it is cross-sectional study. Okay. So as longitudinal study is very longer period of time duration, it is a difficult task. So to remove that complexity, we do cross-sectional studies or cross-sectional research. The next type of design is experimental design. Experimental design is way to carefully plan experiments in advance so that the results are both objective and valid. You have to plan an experiment, you conduct the experiment and find out the outcomes and suggest uh, your recommendations as per those outcomes. So it describes how participants are allocated to uh, experimental groups. Suppose you have two or more experimental groups on uh, what are the participants will be there in those particular experiment groups, right? Generally, this type of design and done in the drug trials or in medicine trials, uh, experimental design, okay? Common method is completely randomized design where participants are assigned to groups at random, okay? Or you can make homogeneous blocks like age group wise, you make blocks and then assign people to those groups. Then you um, do your experiment and analyze the data as per that. So the, the something you should understand that is independent variable and dependent variable. Independent variables are variables that stand on their own and aren't affected by anything, right? And dependent variables are those uh, researcher usually choose independence variable that will affect dependent variable. 
okay so when you are saying customer satisfaction of uh, customers of ntalk then this customer satisfaction will be your independent variable why because you cannot control it it is independent basically so and it will be depending on uh, there will be many factors like you can say age usage mileage and etc on which it will be uh, determined so here are some example if researcher wants to know how calorie take affects weight so calorie intake will be independent variable and since it is affecting weight then weight here will be dependent variable so researcher can choose the calories given to participants and see how that independent variable affects the weight so basically researcher can control independent variable but cannot dependent variables now independent variables sometimes also called as controllable because they are in the control of researcher or explanatory or exposure or feature input variable manipulative variable predictor variable regression risk factor all these names are for independent variables only so dependent variable is just like the name sound it depends upon some factor that the researcher controls right we have already told you uh, sorry i have already told you what are what is dependent by the example of calorie intake and weight so this is about your first uh, module complete module in which research research methodology research designs were explained now uh, is this clear to everyone am i audible to everyone is this clear till what i have told or you have any questions if you want to ask i can give the answer for that okay so i consider silence to be no problem and nothing you want to start the next important thing uh, in your research methodology paper is basically sampling just give me a minute so sampling uh, is a very important aspect of doing any research uh census or sample so sometimes it is possible and practical to examine every person or item in particular we wish to describe uh, whatever research we are taking if we are able to analyze all the related uh, persons or all the related items then that is census but if we cannot do that complete enumeration then what we do we take a sample from that population and that sample should become the representation of that population so sample is nothing but a part of the population which truly represent it must be the true representative of the population okay so this is how if your population is in normal curve like this then your sample should be also in a normally distributed curve so this is what uh, the representativeness of true population of sample should be there so what are the different advantages for sampling the very first is it facilitates timely results because you are analyzing on lesser number of items and individual more accurate results are there because you are not doing any extensive research or it is not time consuming and simple planning can give you more accurate results then less cost and destructive testing less cost because it is more economical right if you are analyzing 40 items and you are analyzing 4 lakh items then of course analyzing 40 items will be economical to you okay then destructive testing so in the course of inspection where you need to identify how many units are destroyed or how many units are affected adversely we have to do sampling only okay but uh, for example to test the quality of explosives right when there is destructive research to test the quality of explosive 
you cannot light every explosive and test them you know test whether it's working or not okay that will you will lost every data every manufactured unit whatever you have so if the units are destroyed and effective adversely uh, in the course of inspection you only use sampling you cannot use sensor survey in destructive testing okay then it is used in certain cases in many cases sensors method may not be physically possible like if you are going to analyze the customer satisfaction of entire user of whole india you cannot do that right because you don't that will be in very large number so what you do you just take sample right and analyze those sample and then generalize the result uh, some considerations are to be kept in mind while doing sample survey uh those considerations may say jo sabse pehla consideration hai uh just a minute uh, before that you should understand what is sampling design so sampling design is method of collecting sample research design was method of doing research and sampling design is method of collecting the sample there are many methods available like probability sampling random sampling quota sampling many methods available we will be discussing it in uh, coming slides and next is what is element an element is an object on which a measurement is taken okay so a group of elements can be used in your research or a single element can be used but a group of element if you are analyzing that particular group of elements will be called as sampling unit okay so sampling unit are non overlapping collection of elements from the population so these four words uh, element sampling design and sampling unit like sampling design is method of collecting sample element is the object and sampling unit is collection of elements so basically you analyze sampling units in your research now there can be biases and error in sampling uh, we generally divide those errors into two parts sampling errors and non sampling errors let's move to this sampling errors so the results of a sample survey are bound to differ from the census results since on, since only a small portion of population is studied in the sample okay and the sampling errors generally arise due to faulty selection of sample if you have not selected sample properly then these errors can uh, you know these errors can occur and faulty demarcation of sampling unit see what is error basically error is basically in any case whatever it is the error is you have estimated value and you have true value and if there are differences in estimated value and true value then that is subjected to error and if this error is due to faulty selection of sample or faulty demarcation of sample or improper use of estimation techniques or heterogeneity or variability of the population to be sampled then this type of error is known as sampling error the next one is non sampling error these arise in all survey whether it is a sample survey or census survey these errors arise due to the number of causes like defective method of data collection you have not collected your data properly you have not define your problem properly right and incomplete coverage of the population or sample if you have not covered population or sample and these errors can arise due to faulty planning if you have not planned your research inaccurate methods of interview lack of trained and experienced investigators personal bias of the investigators we all are humans we all have our personal biases even our emotional state affects uh, how we are going to conduct any research and how we are going to perform any research so this personal bias is also responsible for non sampling errors or errors committed in data processing operations or errors due to you can say typing error or presentation errors or printing errors so this is how you can divide your non sampling errors 
नॉन सैम्पलिंग एरर्स कैन बी बाय फील्ड वर्कर्स और बाय रेस्पॉन्डेंट हु आर रेस्पॉन्डिंग टूवर्ड्स योर क्वेश्चन आयर और योर सर्वे और इंटरव्यू फील्ड वर्कर्स एरर्स कैन बी इंटेंशनल एंड अन इंटेंशनल इंटेंशनल इफ दे चीट दे जस्ट फील सपोज आपने फोर टू फाइव फील्ड वर्कर्स एम्प्लॉय किए हुए हैं जाओ इन इन लोगों से क्वेश्चन एयर भरवा के लेके आओ एंड वॉट दे डू they just take uh, your disadvantage and just uh, they just fill it by themselves that is cheating okay and leading respondents they don't fill them by themselves but they lead or influence the respondents in such a way that they write these these these, these answers so this is also unintentional non sampling error Uh, sorry intentional and intentional are interviewer characteristics like if you are you know dependent on your on the personality of the interviewer if you are like more in aggressive mode or aggressive kind of personality then you it, there may be the chances that you uh, have your bias effect on that there can be misunderstandings or if you are so much tired if your field workers are filled of fatigue they will not take interest in filling your questionnaires or in doing the field work as act okay then as to the respondents if intentional errors are there like falsehoods they uh, give you wrong information and non response they don't respond towards your interview or your question unintentional errors are misunderstanding guessing attention loss they just don't give attention to the surveys distractions and fatigue so these are the example of non sampling errors uh now uh, let's take a look on sampling methods so in general we divide uh, sampling methods into two sampling type non random sampling which is also known as judgment sampling and random sampling which is known as probability sampling so just uh, with the graph i'll be explaining you these are the techniques for sampling we have probability or random and we have non probability and non random sampling uh, in probability we have simple random systematic stratified cluster and area sampling and in non probability or non random we have judgment convenience quota panel and snowball sampling i cannot finish this all types of sampling in uh, this class so we will be continuing from this portion in your next class uh, and i will try my level best to give introduction towards your next block also which is related to the testing or the statistics which you are going to apply in your research uh, just for a spotlight kind of thing probability or random sampling is where every uh, you know aspect or every item from the population has equal probability of being chosen in your sample right if it's like there that every item present in the population has equal opportunity or sorry equal probability of getting selected in the sample then that is probability sampling or otherwise if there is not the probability equal probability of every item being selected in the sampling then that is non probability sampling you all know what is probability i hope probability is chances of occurrence of any event right if event is going to occur what are the chances of occurrence of that event is probability so i just rest my slides here and for in the next section uh, i will be discussing about different sampling and how you make an hypothesis and how you test that particular hypothesis uh, okay uh, your next class is scheduled just in a few minutes uh, is there anyone any question or anything you want to ask people present over here okay then thank you everyone
Hello, learners. Am I audible to all? Am I audible to all?